asking you guys is how many know anything about our great grandma? What what her name was, what her middle name was, what her job she did, anything like that. Anybody know anything? You do? Alright, we got two. That's nice. I got a friend and in his mom's office he's got a picture of Robert E. Lee. And if you know who Robert E. Lee is, he was the uh, general of the Confederates in the Civil War. And I asked him about that portrait because it looks like a self-portrait. And he told me it was a self-portrait and his family can actually be traced all the way back to Robert E. Lee, like his dad's great-grandpa or whatever was Robert E. Lee. And I thought that was super cool because he actually knows something about his family a lot more than I know about my family. But he only knew back, it stops at Robert E. Lee. He doesn't know anything else. Like That's as far as it goes back. And I'm here basically to talk about, I mean, we got ancestors that go back thousands of years. We all have to. We wouldn't be here without them. And it's kind of a shame that we don't know much about them. Like, we don't know who really built the pyramids. We don't know how they were built. We got theories, but we don't really got much else. So today I'm going to talk about all the evidence throughout the world. We got some, there's myths that are, that lead to the theories, there's legends, there's also facts, and a whole lot of controversies. So first thing I'm going to talk about is some of the myths. And we've all heard about Atlantis, that's what we call it, and I'm not talking about the Little Mermaid's home, I'm just talking about a place that once existed that got flooded. And every civilization, not every, but most civilizations throughout the world have tradition, or oral tradition of, flood, of the giant flood. In a recent speech by our classmate, Michael Rodriguez, he spoke about the ancient Maya. The Maya have had five stages. Well, in Chris Morton's book, The Legend of the Crystal Soul, he talks about the Maya and the five stages of life. They were all about 25,000 years, and the past four have already ended. One of those four stages has ended in flood, and that's part of the myth of the fact. More myth is these guys right here. These are all maps that are this is obviously Antarctica, way up here where it shouldn't be. This is Africa, America, with a landmass in between. And this right here is what's called Lemuria. Lemuria is supposedly a land bridge between Africa, Madagascar, and South India. And the thing about that is, is why it's called Lemuria is this is the only place on the world that you're going to find lemurs. You know, lemurs are the little nocturnal guys on the movie Madagascar that like to move it, move it. Those are the lemurs. <laughs> More evidence of a land bridge theory like this is the fact that we got pyramids on every continent. And if you don't think there's pyramids in Asia, just go home and Google Japan sunken pyramid. I don't really got that much time to talk about. And even and with the known fact that Columbus first sailed the oceans in 1492, that just is more support that if we weren't sailing the oceans only 500 years ago, and there is evidence of pyramids thousands of years old on each continent, and they're all built with the same technique, same structures, same style. And I mean, to me, that sounds like communication across the ocean. So next, I am going to talk about maybe some facts. I'm not going to talk, maybe. I'm going to have to talk about some facts. All right. We have evidence all over the world of highly advanced civilizations. In a Reader's Digest documentary titled Mysteries of the Ancient World, it shocked about Egyptian tools. I couldn't get a visual aid for this one, but one of the most controversial tools was something they found, and it was shaped like this. There was two of them, and they were connected in the center, and they kind of were just like shaped like that. And what they found is if you had four of these, and you put one of those big stone blocks in between it, you could roll them up a hill, rather than the ramp theory, with the whole how they built the pyramids. And they actually tested this out, and they wound rope around it, and they pulled this up a hill. And it's just proved that this is actually a, a technique that could have been used to build the pyramids. So, and another thing is astronomical alignment. This is the pyramids of Giza. This is Orion's belt. The pyramids of Giza were built in a mirror image of Orion's belt. And same with another, the those pyramids in, in the Maya pyramids, and I forget what they're called, and I couldn't get visual aids of them, but they were also, I think, no, that's not that. All right, we're going to add on there. But also, more of evidence of ancient people having mass knowledge of this astronomy and physics and all that kind of stuff is that temples and pyramids throughout the world have, on the spring and fall equinox, they have the sun will rise in the center of a certain temple or in a doorway or a certain window. And that and that all that kind of stuff leads to a lot of controversy over our ancestors. And yeah. So basically they had an immense knowledge of astronomical and physics. And what I was just talking about was the whole 
how they put, I did the math with a land grid, or how the sun, this is the math equation they use. This is the sun, this is the earth, this is all the trigonometry behind it that I really don't understand, but they did thousands of years ago, and they got the, the, the they built those structures in the perfect spots so where on the spring or fall equinox, the sun would rise right in the center of that temple. And the problem with most of these is, is that there's a place in the Andes called Tiwanaku. They know that the sun used to rise in the center of this of a certain temple in this place. The problem with that is, is that if they did the math on it, and the last time the sun rose in that spot on that day was 18,000 years ago. So that's a lot longer than they ever have any evidence of any humans before them. And not and there's also evidence back to this one up here that at one point the pyramids of Giza were lined up directly under the, uh, the Orion's belt. And the problem with this one is is the pyramids, the Great Pyramids, were thought to be built by a pharaoh named Khufu. He was lived about to, thought to have lived about 6,000 years ago. Well, if the pyramids were under Orion's belt, that would have been about 13,000 years ago. And that would also have been in the age of Leo. The age of Leo was around 12,000, 13,000 years ago. And we all know that the Sphinx was built when the pyramids were built at the same time. And we all already know that the face has been recarved and it's thought to have originally been a lion. More evidence speaking with the Great Pyramids, the center one, the largest pyramid, is actually lined up true north. It's the biggest compass on the planet. It goes north, south, east, west. And they found that this true north is off by about three minutes of a degrees, and they found that this is due to a shift of, Af of the planet, or the, of the, either of the planet or of the continent of Africa. And when the pyramid was first built, it was exactly lined up to true north, left to right, all over the place. So, I just realized I skipped all my sources. <laughs> Our ancestors had a knowledge displayed all over the planet. They had, they showed that they knew about mathematics. They know that, you know, they knew how to make the sun rise in certain temples, and they knew a lot of stuff. And they might even have been sailing the oceans or communicating through the oceans through a land bridge. I hope that we are the last generation that doesn't know the answer to all these questions, and that I have inspired you to study a little bit more about where we came from, and hopefully <coughs> my speech is over you more into that. So thank you. <coughs>